It's good to be back with all of you. In recent days, following guidance issued by the DC government, we have announced a transition in our policy on mask wearing. In today's presentation, I'd like to provide some context on our approach and then review some of the factors we are continuing to monitor as we consider future adjustments we may need to make to our layered public health program. First, let me talk about the new COVID community levels announced by the CDC a few weeks ago. This is a new tool for local jurisdictions to use to determine the severity of COVID-19 transmission in their region and appropriate public health measures based on those conditions. In a recent presentation, Dr. Renit Mishori, our Chief Public Health Officer, provided some context on this new framework. Local areas are categorized as low, medium, or high, according to a number of factors, the number of hospital beds being used, hospital admissions, the number of new COVID-19 cases. Each level corresponds to public health recommendations from the CDC. Based on this, health departments can determine what approaches are appropriate in their local community. Here in Washington, D.C., our community level is currently categorized as low. The number of new cases has continued to decline. Two weeks ago, following this new CDC guidance, the D.C. government issued new guidance for individuals and institutions in our city. If we see a change in our COVID community level here in D.C., we expect the D.C. government to update their public health requirements. We are always monitoring the guidance from the CDC and from our local health department, as well as the conditions in our university community. In recent weeks, we have continued to see low numbers of new cases and low positivity rates in our community. Based on the new CDC and DC health guidance, we have transitioned to a mask optional policy on our campuses. Our campuses are instituting this policy one week after our students return from spring break in order to ensure that the number of cases and positivity rates remain low after students return from spring break travel. We have asked all students who traveled outside the DC area to test upon their return to campus. There are some exceptions to our mask optional policy. Masks are worn at our healthcare facilities and testing sites, on our transportation services, by staff and young children in our early childhood education centers, by someone who has an exemption or accommodation plan that includes enhanced public health measures. Some people may still choose to mask for different personal reasons we are providing resources to our community from our Center for New Designs and Learning and Scholarship, Candles, and from Human Resources to help our community navigate conversations about mask wearing with mutual respect and civility. As we monitor conditions, we are continuing to provide testing for our community. We have an asymptomatic testing program, a random sample, of community members are selected each week to test. In certain settings and contexts, testing is still required. We provide on-demand testing for all of our students, faculty, and staff. And we have also extended our testing to include pediatric testing so that benefits eligible employees can receive free testing for children under the age of five, a population still not eligible for vaccination. Our testing program allows us to track changes in the new cases and positivity rate in our community. Our mask optional policy is contingent on the number of new cases and positivity remaining low. If we see the number of new cases and positivity begin to rise, we will review and adjust our approach to fit the current conditions. While we are seeing low cases in our community and in our region, 
there are emerging situations that we are closely monitoring around the world. More than a dozen European countries are seeing a new rise in cases. Throughout the pandemic, rising cases in Europe have preceded surges here in the United States. This rise in cases in Europe is thought to be partly driven by a subvariant of Omicron known as BA2. This more transmissible form of the Omicron variant is beginning to overtake the previous Omicron subvariant, BA1. Subvariants are very similar to one another, similar enough that scientists include them under the same variant category. Some characteristics may differ, but they are still classified as part of the same variant group. With BA2 now emerging, there is early evidence that being up to date on vaccination, receiving the primary series and the booster dose of the COVID-19 vaccine, this offers excellent protection against severe disease from BA2 as it does against BA1. We are closely watching what unfolds in Europe as they respond to these emerging conditions and that we can anticipate what we might expect here in the United States. Despite the overall number of cases dropping in the United States, a growing percentage of cases are BA2. This is something we will monitor closely. I hope this has given you a sense of the context for our recent announcement and the factors we are continuing to monitor as we look ahead. Our layered public health approach provides many layers of protection. Throughout the pandemic, we have adjusted different elements of this program according to the context at any given moment, and we will continue to monitor closely for future adjustments. Thank you all. I wish you the very best as we reach the second half of our semester. Take care of yourselves and take care of everyone around you. For every Hoya, everywhere.